Let's start off with some trivia. The hottest planet in our solar system is roughly 450 degrees Celsius. Let me know in the comments below what planet you think that is. Welcome back everybody, and today we're going to be discussing astrophotography in the best broadband and narrowband targets in the night sky for the month of November. Now keep in mind, for these exposure times that I'm going to be recommending, it is of course with my skies in perspective. Now I'm a Bortle 5, which means I'm right in the middle. Let's start off with narrowband, as the moon is indeed becoming a bit brighter, it's more likely that you're going to start imaging with narrowband anyway. So the first target, let's talk about this one, the Spaghetti Nebula, or SH2-240. It's a very large supernova remnant, and it's about three degrees in diameter, which is massive. This is a fairly challenging target because of two reasons. Number one is it needs really short focal lengths to get this entire complex. It's that big. Now, I'm going to recommend anywhere from 135 to 200 millimeters of focal length, the second reason why this is a very tough target is because it will require a lot of time to get a good integrated image. Now with that, my recommendation for this is a minimum of 10 to 15 hours for hydrogen alpha and 15 to 20 hours of oxygen or O3. Now with one shot color, Using something, say, the L Extreme, I would definitely recommend no less than 25 total hours. Now, this image can really benefit from also doing HAO3 plus RGB. Now that's confusing, let me put that up over here. This way you can truly create an HOO palette and narrowband, but integrate your RGB stars and help really make this image pop. It'll do it justice, I promise you won't regret it. With that, let's go ahead and move on to number two, is the Spider Nebula. It's cataloged as IC417, or 417, and it lies roughly 10,000 light years away from Earth. Now be very careful. Overall, this nebula is much smaller, so you will need at least about 800 millimeters of focal length to really make it worth your time. So if you're stuck with a smaller aperture telescope that doesn't have a good amount of reach, you might not be best suited for this one, but you could definitely do its neighbor uh, with the tadpoles or the flaming star. Now this could also benefit telescopes as much as 1600 millimeters. So now moving on, number three is the Ghost of Cassiopeia, IC63. It's nicknamed the Ghost Nebula or the Ghost of Cassiopeia. It is located about 500 light years away from Earth. This particular nebula is unique in the sense it's classified as both a reflection nebula, is reflecting the light of a nearby star, and it's also considered an emission nebula, right? It's releasing hydrogen alpha radiation. Now, both effects are caused by the gigantic star Gamma Cassiopeia, which releases enough energy that's the equivalent of 34,000, yes, 34,000 of our suns. Now, for this particular target, I'd recommend no less than maybe 700 millimeters and up to maybe 1200 millimeters of total focal length. The image that I have here behind me though is gonna have been taken with a 666 millimeter focal length APS-C sized sensor. Um, but again, 1000 millimeters is probably your best bet if you have something that's in that range for this particular target. Now, let's move on. Number four is the California Nebula. Right behind me here, you can see this beautiful four panel mosaic that I did. The California Nebula is designated the catalog code in the new general catalog of NGC 1499. The most notable characteristic of this nebula is its striking resemblance to the shape of the United States state of California. Now this target would be ideal for 135 millimeters up to about 400 millimeters, unless you're going to step on a ledge and try to do a mosaic. Now, narrowband mosaics are a bit easier than LRGB mosaics, but even then I still caution everybody who wants to do a mosaic, maybe try not to if you can. So our last narrowband target, let's move on to number five, is going to be the Tadpoles Nebula. I had mentioned that before. If you didn't have the focal length for the Spider Nebula, you can go to its cosmic neighbor here, the Tadpoles Nebula, which is also another area of ionized hydrogen gas spanning over 100 light years across. Now the Tadpoles Nebula is located about 12,000 light years away from Earth and is nicknamed the Tadpoles because of, well, the tadpole shaped clouds of 
um, of dark dust and gas that appear to be sort of swimming towards the center. I've shot this target at a thousand millimeters. I've also done it at a little bit less of focal length, but I can tell you about a thousand is gonna be your ideal number. It truly does work well with something like the ZWO ASI 1600mm or any of your four third size sensors will do great at a thousand. This one is absolutely worth your time to spend 20 to 30 hours, maybe more. So now that we've talked about our narrow band, let's head back to our one shot color LRGB targets for maybe later in the month when the moon starts to dim back down and it's not overexposing our images really quickly. So number one, of course, the Orion Nebula, M42. The nebula is only 1,500 light years away from Earth, making it the closest large star forming region to us here on Earth and giving it an apparent magnitude of about four. Now, because of how bright it is and its prominent location just below Orion's belt, you can actually spot this nebula with your naked eye. So you can shoot this in broadband or narrowband alike. Either way, you can't go wrong. Moving on though, number two is M45 or the Pleiades, which is commonly known as the Seven Sisters. M45 is an open star cluster. It actually contains way more than just seven stars, even though it's called the Seven Sisters. It contains thousands of stars that are loosely bound by gravity. Now M45 is located at about 445 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Taurus and has an apparent magnitude of 1.6. So now M45 is in fact so bright that you definitely want to keep your exposures under a minute. Otherwise you're going to be look at flooding your image with overexposed pixels and those will continue to flow over to the next pixels thereby overexposing your image. So definitely keep your images short with this. So moving on to number three is going to be the Witch Head Nebula. Now, as the name implies, this reflection nebula is associated with a star called Rigel. And it looks suspiciously like a fairy tale witch. Formerly, it's known as IC 2118, and it's in the constellation of Orion. So this will need to have some attention paid to with this large star because it can ruin your images. It can cause halos or even these, I don't know what they're formally called, but I've seen images where it's just this giant streak of light coming into the image and it's because of the star. Anywhere from 200 to 400 millimeters would be great for this size target. Medium exposures can really bring out the colors of this faint reflection nebula. So now number four is NGC 7479. Now, disclaimer with this one, I wanted to throw in a target that's going to be a bit harder for some people. This one truly will require some focal length. So if you're limited to something like the William Optic Z61, uh, go ahead and skip to number five here. Now NGC 7479 is a beautiful spiral galaxy that was originally discovered by none other than William Herschel in 1784. And it's a classical barred spiral galaxy as it's more specific classification. Again, I would recommend no less than 1600 millimeters for this particular target. Something like um, an RC8 or larger would really yield the best results for this. Now, number five is gonna be the Embryo Nebula or classified as NGC 1333. And just like all these other ones, it's a diffuse reflection nebula about four light years across that is less than a million years old. Now it's located only about 1000 light years away from Earth in the northern constellation of Perseus at the edge of the Perseus molecular cloud. It is one of the nearest star forming regions and particularly rich with these young stars. Now I would recommend at least 800 millimeters of focal length for something like this. Uh, maybe an eight inch Newtonian would be a great example. So that's gonna be my list. Go ahead down into the comment section below. Let me know if you felt I missed a target that is worthy of people's time to shoot in the month of November. You know, with so many possible targets, I just wanna make sure I have a good balance between different types of nebulae and galaxies that can offer great results to a different variety of people with long focal length and short focal length, large camera sensors and small camera sensors. So with that, thanks for joining today and be sure to hit that thumbs up, right? That helps me out and it lets me know if you like the content. I always appreciate it. And if you have any questions, be sure to let me know as well down below. I'm always happy to help. So until next time, clear skies and we'll see you next time.